While many department stores across the country are struggling, a few in New York City are doubling down, hoping that certain neighborhoods in the Big Apple are havens of untapped opportunity. Here with the story of the store wars is WSJ's fashion columnist, Christina Binkley. Welcome, Christina. Great to see you. Good day. So, Christina, Barney's is making a big comeback here in New York. I know lots of people who will be very happy about this. What changed for them? Well, you know what? It really has to do with the downtown client. They discovered some time ago that they weren't serving the downtown client at their Madison Avenue flagship way uptown and started looking around for spaces. Incredibly found a store that they had abandoned in 1997. It was a, a space that they had occupied since 1923. So they're totally going home. And they certainly have a cult following. So I'm sure people will be very, very excited about that. Now, what are some other department stores? Although, as you point out, Barney's doesn't consider itself a department department store <laughs> that are either laying down roots or expanding here in New York. This is really mind-blowing. Neiman Marcus and Nordstrom's are both bringing their first stores ever to New York City. Uh, one, one coming to the Hudson Yards, the other way down south in, in, in Brookfield Place. Saks is building uh, I'm sorry, that's wrong. Sa it's Saks is building uh, two new stores at Brookfield Place way down south. The, the Nordstrom is going up, up, up in the 50s on the west side. So I have to say that Hudson Yards seems like an interesting choice for Neiman Marcus to plant its first New York store. What did executives there tell you about their vision of that neighborhood? Well, you know, I think it really comes down to that old sod, location, location, location. If you think about what's happening in Hudson Yards, that is like going to be a city of its own. It's going to be supposedly full of tourists as well as people moving there. And that's, that's thousands or tens of thousands of people, of people who are potential clients for them. So we have Nordstrom's, Neiman, Saks is expanding. But things are not quite so rosy for that classic New York department store, Macy's, are they? Yeah, of course, it's, it's not just a New York issue. That's a, that's a, a national issue. But they, their earnings are down. They're under pressure to spin off their real estate. And you imagine the value of that building they have there on Herald Square. Absolutely. So are they facing the same pressures that department stores across the country are facing? We've been read, hearing about this story for years, right? I mean, maybe even decades. I'm sort of do, playing sort of nostalgia, going down memory lane with all the department stores that used to be in New York. I can still remember shopping at Bonwit Teller. That's like a, a name from the past now. Yes. So we've had decades of these pressures. But what makes New York different at this moment in time that all of these stores are willing to make these really huge bets on it? huge bets. And it really made me start thinking about what's been going on in New York for the last decade or so. I mean, we all remember, many of us remember when meatpacking had literally blood running in the streets because it was full of meat packers, right? Yes. And you prostitutes. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Soho meatpacking are vibrant neighborhoods. <clears throat> Excuse me full of tourists and residents. It is a great shopping town, New York, I have to say. So, I mean, I, I for one, you know, love it here. So I can see why stores would want to come. Let's see, though, if these big bets pay off. There's a lot. New Yorkers love their department stores, maybe like no other town, but it's a lot for the city to absorb. Yep, let's see if it works. All right, Christina Binkley, thank you so much for that. My pleasure.